Iodine is a chemical element with symbol I and atomic number 53. The heaviest of the stable halogens, it exists as a lustrous, purple-black non-metallic solid at standard conditions that sublimes readily to form a violet gas. The elemental form was discovered by the French chemist Bernard Courtois in 1811. It was named two years later by Joseph Louis Gay Lussac from this property, after the Greek iodes. Violet -colored". Iodine occurs in many oxidation states, including iodide I iodate IO and the various periodate anions. It is the least abundant of the stable halogens, being the 61st most abundant element. It is even less abundant than the so-called rare earths. It is the heaviest essential mineral nutrient. Iodine is essential in the synthesis of thyroid hormones. Iodine deficiency affects about 2 billion people and is the leading preventable cause of intellectual disabilities. The dominant producers of iodine today are Chile and Japan. Iodine and its compounds are primarily used in nutrition. Due to its high atomic number and ease of attachment to organic compounds, it has also found favor as a non-toxic radiocontrast material. Because of the specificity of its uptake by the human body, radioactive isotopes of iodine can also be used to treat thyroid cancer. Iodine is also used as a catalyst in the industrial production of acetic acid and some polymers. History In 1811, iodine was discovered by French chemist Bernard Courtois, who was born to a manufacturer of saltpetre an essential component of gunpowder. At the time of the Napoleonic Wars, saltpetre was in great demand in France. Saltpetre produced from French nitre beds required sodium carbonate, which could be isolated from seaweed collected on the coasts of Normandy and Brittany. To isolate the sodium carbonate, seaweed was burned and the ash washed with water. The remaining waste was destroyed by adding sulfuric acid. Courtois once added excessive sulfuric acid and a cloud of purple vapor rose. He noted that the vapor crystallized on cold surfaces, making dark crystals. Courtois suspected that this material was a new element but lacked funding to pursue it further. Courtois gave samples to his friends, Charles Bernard de Sormes (1777–1838) and Nicolas Clement (1779–1841) to continue research. He also gave some of the substance to chemist Joseph Louis Gay Lussac (1778–1850) and to physicist André Marie Ampère (1775–1836). On 29 November 1813, de Sormes and Clement made Courtois discovery public. They described the substance to a meeting of the Imperial Institute of France. On 6 December, Gay Lussac announced that the new substance was either an element or a compound of oxygen. It was Gay Lussac who suggested the name, Iode, from the Greek word Eoaides for violet because of the color of iodine vapor. Ampere had given some of his sample to English chemist Humphrey Davy (1778–1829), who experimented on the substance and noted its similarity to chlorine. Davy sent a letter dated the 10th of December to the Royal Society of London, stating that he had identified a new element. Arguments erupted between Davy and Gay Lussac over who identified iodine first, but both scientists acknowledged Courtois as the first to isolate the element. Properties. Iodine is the fourth halogen, being a member of group 17 in the periodic table, below fluorine, chlorine, and bromine. It is the heaviest stable member of its group. The scarce and fugitive fifth halogen, the radioactive astatine, is not well studied due to its expense and inaccessibility in large quantities, but appears to show various unusual properties due to relativistic effects. Iodine has an electron configuration of Kr 4d105 25p5, with the seven electrons in the fifth and outermost shell being its valence electrons. Like the other halogens, it is one electron short of a full octet and is hence a strong oxidizing agent, reacting with many elements in order to complete its outer shell. Although in keeping with periodic trends, it is the weakest oxidizing agent among the stable halogens, it has the lowest electronegativity among them, just 2.66 on the Pauling scale. Compare fluorine, chlorine, and bromine at 3.98, 3.16, and 2.96 respectively. Astatine continues the trend with an electronegativity of 2.2. 
Elemental iodine hence forms diatomic molecules with chemical formula I2, where two iodine atoms share a pair of electrons in order to each achieve a stable octet for themselves. At high temperatures, these diatomic molecules reversibly dissociate a pair of iodine atoms. Similarly, the iodide anion, I, is the strongest reducing agent among the stable halogens, being the most easily oxidized back to diatomic I2. Astatine goes further, being indeed unstable as at minus and readily oxidized to at zero or at plus. Although the existence of at two is not settled, the halogens darken in color as the group is descended. Fluorine is a very pale yellow gas, chlorine is greenish yellow, and bromine is a reddish brown volatile liquid. Iodine conforms to the prevailing trend, being a shiny black crystalline solid that melts at 114 degrees Celsius and boils at 183 degrees Celsius to form a violet gas. This trend occurs because the wavelengths of visible light absorbed by the halogens increase down the group though astatine may not conform to it, depending on how metallic it turns out to be. Specifically, the violet color of iodine gas results from the electron transition between the highest occupied antibonding pi g molecular orbital and the lowest vacant antibonding sigma u molecular orbital. Elemental iodine is slightly soluble in water, with 1 gram dissolving in 3450 milliliters at 20 degrees Celsius and 1280 milliliters at 50 degrees Celsius. Potassium iodide may be added to increase solubility via formation of triiodide ions among other polyiodides. Nonpolar solvents such as hexane and carbon tetrachloride provide a higher solubility. Polar solutions, such as aqueous solutions, are brown, reflecting the role of these solvents as Lewis bases. On the other hand, nonpolar solutions are violet, the color of iodine vapor. Charge transfer complexes form when iodine is dissolved in polar solvents, hence changing the color. Iodine is violet when dissolved in carbon tetrachloride and saturated hydrocarbons but deep brown in alcohols and amines, solvents that form charge transfer adducts. The melting and boiling points of iodine are the highest among the halogens, conforming to the increasing trend down the group, since iodine has the largest electron cloud among them that is the most easily polarized, resulting in its molecules having the strongest van der Waals interactions among the halogens. Similarly, iodine is the least volatile of the halogens. Because it has the largest atomic radius among the halogens, iodine has the lowest first ionization energy, lowest electron affinity, lowest electronegativity and lowest reactivity of the halogens. The interhalogen bond in diiodine is the weakest of all the halogens. As such, 1% of a sample of gaseous iodine at atmospheric pressure is dissociated into iodine atoms at 575 degrees Celsius. Temperatures greater than 750 degrees Celsius are required for fluorine, chlorine, and bromine to dissociate to a similar extent. Most bonds to iodine are weaker than the analogous bonds to the lighter halogens. Gaseous iodine is composed of I2 molecules with an II bond length of 266.6 pm. The II bond is one of the longest single bonds known. It is even longer .5 pm in solid orthorhombic crystalline iodine, which has the same crystal structure as chlorine and bromine. The record is held by iodine's neighbor xenon. The ZZ bond length is 308.71 pm. As such, within the iodine molecule, significant electronic interactions occur with the two next nearest neighbors of each atom, and these interactions give rise, in bulk iodine, to a shiny appearance and semiconducting properties. Iodine is a two-dimensional semiconductor with a band gap of 1.3 electron volts, 125 per mole. It is a semiconductor in the plane of its crystalline layers and an insulator in the perpendicular direction. Isotopes. Of the 37 known isotopes of iodine, only one occurs in nature, iodine-127. The others are radioactive and have half-lives too short to be primordial. As such, iodine is monoisotopic and its atomic weight is known to great precision, as it is a constant of nature. The longest lived of the radioactive isotopes of iodine is iodine 129, which has a half life of 15.7 million years, decaying via beta decay to stable xenon 129. Some iodine-129 was formed along with iodine-127 before the formation of the solar system, but it has by now completely decayed away, making it an extinct radionuclide that is nevertheless still useful in dating the history of the early solar system or very old groundwaters, due to its mobility in the environment. 
Its former presence may be determined from an excess of its daughter Xenon 129. Traces of iodine-129 still exist today, as it is also a cosmogenic nuclide, formed from cosmic ray spallation of atmospheric xenon. These traces make up 10-14 to 10-10 of all terrestrial iodine. It also occurs from open-air nuclear testing, and is not hazardous because of its incredibly long half-life, the longest of all fission products. At the peak of thermonuclear testing in the 1960s and 1970s, iodine-129 still made up only about 10-7 of all terrestrial iodine. Excited states of iodine-127 and iodine-129 are often used in Mossbauer spectroscopy. The other iodine radioisotopes have much shorter half-lives, no longer than days. Some of them have medical applications involving the thyroid gland, where the iodine that enters the body is stored and concentrated. Iodine-123 has a half-life of 13 hours and decays by electron capture to tellurium-123, emitting gamma radiation. It is used in nuclear medicine imaging, including single photon emission computed tomography (SPECT) and X-ray computed tomography (X-ray CT) scans. Iodine-125 has a half-life of 59 days, decaying by electron capture to tellurium-125 and emitting low-energy gamma radiation, the second longest lived iodine radioisotope. It has uses in biological assays, nuclear medicine imaging and in radiation therapy as brachytherapy to treat a number of conditions, including prostate cancer, uveal melanomas, and brain tumors. Finally, iodine-131, with a half-life of 8 days, beta decays to an excited state of stable xenon-131 that then converts to the ground state by emitting gamma radiation. It is a common fission product and thus is present in high levels in radioactive fallout. It may then be absorbed through contaminated food, and will also accumulate in the thyroid. As it decays, it may cause damage to the thyroid. The primary risk from exposure to high levels of iodine-131 is the chance occurrence of radiogenic thyroid cancer in later life. Other risks include the possibility of non-cancerous growths and thyroiditis. The usual means of protection against the negative effects of iodine-131 is by saturating the thyroid gland with stable iodine-127 in the form of potassium iodide tablets, taken daily for optimal prophylaxis. However, iodine-131 may also be used for medicinal purposes in radiation therapy for this very reason, when tissue destruction is desired after iodine uptake by the tissue. Iodine-131 is also used as a radioactive tracer. Chemistry and compounds Though it is the least reactive of the halogens, iodine is still one of the more reactive elements. For example, while chlorine gas will halogenate carbon monoxide, nitric oxide, and sulfur dioxide to phosgene, nitrosyl chloride, and sulfuryl chloride respectively, iodine will not do so. Furthermore, iodination of metals tends to result in lower oxidation states than chlorination or bromination, for example, rhenium metal reacts with chlorine to form rhenium hexachloride, but with bromine it forms only rhenium pentabromide and iodine can achieve only rhenium tetriodide. By the same token, however, since iodine has the lowest ionization energy among the halogens and is the most easily oxidized of them, it has a more significant cationic chemistry and its higher oxidation states are rather more stable than those of bromine and chlorine, for example in iodine heptafluoride. Hydrogen iodide The simplest compound of iodine is hydrogen iodide, HI. It is a colorless gas that reacts with oxygen to give water and iodine. Although it is useful in iodination reactions in the laboratory, it does not have large-scale industrial uses, unlike the other hydrogen halides. Commercially, it is usually made by reacting iodine with hydrogen sulfide or hydrazine. 2I2 plus N2H4 H2O4 Hi plus N2 at room temperature, it is a colorless gas, like all of the hydrogen halides except hydrogen fluoride, since hydrogen cannot form strong hydrogen bonds to the large and only mildly electronegative iodine atom. It melts at 51.0 degrees Celsius and boils at 35.1 degrees Celsius. It is an endothermic compound that can exothermically dissociate at room temperature, although the process is very slow unless a catalyst is present. The reaction between hydrogen and iodine at room temperature to give hydrogen iodide does not proceed to completion. 
The HI bond dissociation energy is likewise the smallest of the hydrogen halides, at 295 kJ per mole. Aqueous hydrogen iodide is known as hydroiodic acid, which is a strong acid. Hydrogen iodide is exceptionally soluble in water, one liter of water will dissolve 425 liters of hydrogen iodide, and the saturated solution has only four water molecules per molecule of hydrogen iodide. Commercial so called concentrated Hydroiodic acid usually contains 48 to 57 percent high by mass. The solution forms an azeotrope with boiling point 126.7 degrees Celsius at 56.7 grams high per 100 grams solution. Hence, hydroiodic acid cannot be concentrated past this point by evaporation of water. Unlike hydrogen fluoride, anhydrous liquid hydrogen iodide is difficult to work with as a solvent, because its boiling point is low, it has a small liquid range, its dielectric constant is low, and it does not dissociate appreciably into H2I and high 2 ions. The latter, in any case, are much less stable than the bifluoride ions HF due to the very weak hydrogen bonding between hydrogen and iodine. Iodine, though its salts with very large and weakly polarizing cations such as Cs plus and Nr plus 4 may still be isolated. Anhydrous hydrogen iodide is a poor solvent, able to dissolve only small molecular compounds such as nitrosyl chloride and phenol, or salts with very low lattice energies such as tetraalkylammonium halides. Other binary iodides Nearly all elements in the periodic table form binary iodides. The exceptions are decidedly in the minority and stem in each case from one of three causes, extreme inertness and reluctance to participate in chemical reactions the noble gases, extreme nuclear instability hampering chemical investigation before decay and transmutation many of the heaviest elements beyond bismuth, and having an electronegativity higher than iodine. S oxygen, nitrogen, and the first three halogens, so that the resultant binary compounds are formally not iodides but rather oxides, nitrides, or halides of iodine. Nonetheless, nitrogen triiodide is named as an iodide as it is analogous to the other nitrogen trihalides, given the large size of the iodide anion and iodine. S weak oxidizing power. High oxidation states are difficult to achieve in binary iodides, the maximum known being in the pentiodides of niobium, tantalum, and protactinium. Iodides can be made by reaction of an element or its oxide, hydroxide, or carbonate with hydroiodic acid, and then dehydrated by mildly high temperatures combined with either low pressure or anhydrous hydrogen iodide gas. These methods work best when the iodide product is stable to hydrolysis, otherwise, the possibilities include high temperature oxidative iodination of the element with iodine or hydrogen iodide, high temperature iodination of a metal oxide or other halide by iodine, a volatile metal halide, carbon tetriodide, or an organic iodide. For example, molybdenum IV oxide reacts with aluminium iodide at 230 degrees Celsius to give molybdenum iodide. An example involving halogen exchange is given below, involving the reaction of tantalum v chloride with excess aluminium iodide at 400 degrees Celsius to give tantalum v iodide 3 TaCl 5 plus 5 Ali 3 Excess three tie five plus five aluminium chloride three Display style CE three TACL five plus underset excess five aluminium iodide to three tie five plus five aluminium chloride Lower iodides may be produced either through thermal decomposition or disproportionation, or by reducing the higher iodide with hydrogen or a metal, for example. Ti 5 plus Ta 630 C 575 C Thermal gradient. Ta 
6 i 14 display style ce tie 5 plus ta2 text thermal gradient ce 630 caret circ c 2 575 caret circ c ta 6 i 14 most of the iodides of the pre-transition metals groups 1, 2, and 3, along with the lanthanides and actinides in the plus 2 and plus 3 oxidation states are mostly ionic, while nonmetals tend to form covalent molecular iodides, as do metals in high oxidation states from plus 3 and above. Ionic iodides min tend to have the lowest melting and boiling points among the halides MXN of the same element, because the electrostatic forces of attraction between the cations and anions are weakest for the large iodide anion. In contrast, covalent iodides tend to instead have the highest melting and boiling points among the halides of the same element, since iodine is the most polarizable of the halogens and, having the most electrons among them, can contribute the most to van der Waals forces. Naturally, exceptions abound in intermediate iodides where one trend gives way to the other. Similarly, solubilities in water of predominantly ionic iodides e.g. potassium and calcium are the greatest among ionic halides of that element, while those of covalent iodides e.g. silver are the lowest of that element. In particular, silver iodide is very insoluble in water and its formation is often used as a qualitative test for iodine. Iodine halides the halogens form many binary, diamagnetic interhalogen compounds with stoichiometries xy, xy3, xy5, and xy7 where x is heavier than y, and iodine is no exception. Iodine forms all three possible diatomic interhalogens, a trifluoride and trichloride, as well as a pentafluoride and, exceptionally among the halogens, a heptafluoride. Numerous cationic and anionic derivatives are also characterized, such as the wine red or bright orange compounds of ICL2 and the dark brown or purplish black compounds of D iodine monochloride. Apart from these, some pseudohalides are also known, such as cyanogen iodide, iodine thiocyanate, and iodine azide. Iodine monofluoride if is unstable at room temperature and disproportionates very readily and irreversibly to iodine and iodine pentafluoride, and thus cannot be obtained pure. It can be synthesized from the reaction of iodine with fluorine gas in trichlorofluoromethane at 45 degrees Celsius, with iodine trifluoride in trichlorofluoromethane at 78 degrees Celsius, or with silver fluoride at 0 degrees Celsius. Iodine monochloride ICL and iodine monobromide IBR, on the other hand, are moderately stable. The former, a volatile red-brown compound, was discovered independently by Joseph Louis Gay Lussac and Humphrey Davy in 1813–4 not long after the discoveries of chlorine and iodine, and it mimics the intermediate halogen bromine so well that Justus von Liebig was misled into mistaking bromine which he had found for iodine monochloride. Iodine monochloride and iodine monobromide may be prepared simply by reacting iodine with chlorine or bromine at room temperature and purified by fractional crystallization. Both are quite reactive and attack even platinum and gold, though not boron, carbon, cadmium, lead, zirconium, niobium, molybdenum, and tungsten. Their reaction with organic compounds depends on conditions. Iodine chloride vapor tends to chlorinate phenol and salicyclic acid, since when iodine chloride undergoes homolytic dissociation, chlorine and iodine are produced and the former is more reactive. However, iodine chloride in tetrachloromethane solution results in iodination being the main reaction, since now heterolytic fission of the ICL bond occurs and I plus attacks phenol as an electrophile. However, iodine monobromide tends to brominate phenol even in tetrachloromethane solution because it tends to dissociate into its elements in solution, and bromine is more reactive than iodine. When liquid, iodine monochloride and iodine monobromide dissociate into I2X plus and X2 anions X equals Cl, bridge, thus they are significant conductors of electricity and can be used as ionizing solvents. Iodine trifluoride IF3 is an unstable yellow solid that decomposes above 28 degrees Celsius. It is thus little known. It is difficult to produce because fluorine gas would tend to oxidize iodine all the way to the pentafluoride. Reaction at low temperature with xenon difluoride is necessary. 
Iodine trichloride, which exists in the solid state as the planar dimer D-iodine hexachloride, is a bright yellow solid, synthesized by reacting iodine with liquid chlorine at 80 degrees Celsius. Caution is necessary during purification because it easily dissociates to iodine monochloride and chlorine and hence can act as a strong chlorinating agent. Liquid iodine trichloride conducts electricity, possibly indicating dissociation to ICl2 and ICl4 ions. Iodine pentafluoride, IF5, a colorless volatile liquid, is the most thermodynamically stable iodine fluoride and can be made by reacting iodine with fluorine gas at room temperature. It is a fluorinating agent but is mild enough to store in glass apparatus. Again, slight electrical conductivity is present in the liquid state because of dissociation to if plus 4 and if minus 6. The pentagonal bipyramidal iodine heptafluoride IF7 is an extremely powerful fluorinating agent, behind only chlorine trifluoride, chlorine pentafluoride, and bromine pentafluoride among the interhalogens. It reacts with almost all the elements even at low temperatures, fluorinates pyrex glass to form iodine oxyfluoride, IOF5, and sets carbon monoxide on fire. Iodine oxides and oxoacids Iodine oxides are the most stable of all the halogen oxides, because of the strong I-O bonds resulting from the large electronegativity difference between iodine and oxygen, and they have been known for the longest time. The stable, white, hygroscopic iodine pentoxide has been known since its formation in 1813 by Gay Lussac and Davy. It is most easily made by the dehydration of iodic acid of which it is the anhydride. It will quickly oxidize carbon monoxide completely to carbon dioxide at room temperature, and is thus a useful reagent in determining carbon monoxide concentration. It also oxidizes nitrogen oxide, ethylene, and hydrogen sulfide. It reacts with sulfur trioxide and peroxidisulfuryl difluoride S2O6F2 to form salts of the iodyl cation IO2+ and is reduced by concentrated sulfuric acids to iodosyl salts involving IO+. It may be fluorinated by fluorine, bromine trifluoride, sulfur tetrafluoride, or chloral fluoride, resulting iodine pentafluoride, which also reacts with iodine pentoxide, giving iodine v oxyfluoride IOF3. A few other less stable oxides are known, notably I409 and I204. Their structures have not been determined, but reasonable guesses are 4 IVO3, 3 and IO+ IO3- minus respectively. More important are the four oxoacids, hypoidous acid HIO, iodous acid HIO2, iodic acid HIO3, and periodic acid HIO4 or H5IO6. When iodine dissolves in aqueous solution, the following reactions occur. Hypoidous acid is unstable to disproportionation. The hypoiodite ions thus form disproportionate immediately to give iodide and iodate. Iodous acid and iodite are even less stable and exist only as a fleeting intermediate in the oxidation of iodide to iodate, if at all. Iodates are by far the most important of these compounds, which can be made by oxidizing alkali metal iodides with oxygen at 600 degrees Celsius and high pressure, or by oxidizing iodine with chlorates. Unlike chlorates, which disproportionate very slowly to form chloride and perchlorate, iodates are stable to disproportionation in both acidic and alkaline solutions. From these, salts of most metals can be obtained. Iodic acid is most easily made by oxidation of an aqueous iodine suspension by electrolysis or fuming nitric acid. Iodate has the weakest oxidizing power of the halates, but reacts the quickest. Many periodates are known, including not only the expected tetrahedral IO4, but also square pyramidal IO3-5, octahedral orthoperiodate IO5-6, IO3-0-3-2-, I208-0H2-4-, OH and I204-9. They are usually made by oxidizing alkaline sodium iodate electrochemically with lead IV oxide as the anode or by chlorine gas. IO3 plus 6 O minus IO5 minus 6 plus 3 H2O plus 2 E minus 
I O minus three plus six O minus plus C L two I O five minus six plus two C L minus plus three H two O the are thermodynamically and kinetically powerful oxidizing agents, quickly oxidizing Minnesota two plus to M N O minus four, and cleaving glycols, alpha diketones, alpha ketones, alpha aminoalcohols, and alpha diamines. Orthoperiodate especially stabilizes high oxidation states among metals because of its very high negative charge of minus five. Orthoperiodic acid, H5IO6, is stable, and dehydrates at 100 degrees Celsius in a vacuum to metaperiodic acid, HIO4. Attempting to go further does not result in the non-existent iodine heptoxide but rather iodine pentoxide and oxygen. Periodic acid may be protonated by sulfuric acid to give the iodine monohydroxide plus 6 cation, isoelectronic to Te 6 and antimony 1 hydroxide minus 6, and giving salts with bisulfate and sulfate. Polyiodine compounds When iodine dissolves in strong acids, such as fuming sulfuric acid, a bright blue paramagnetic solution including I plus 2 cations is formed. A solid salt of the diiodine cation may be obtained by oxidizing iodine with antimony pentafluoride. 2I2 plus 5 antimony 5 fluoride SO2 20 degrees Celsius 2I2 plus antimony 3 fluoride The salt I2 is dark blue, and the blue tantalum analog I2 Ta2 F11 is also known. Whereas the II bond length in I2 is 267 pm, that in I2 is only 256 pm as the missing electron in the latter has been removed from an antibonding orbital, making the bond stronger and hence shorter. In fluorosulfuric acid solution, deep blue I2 reversibly dimerizes below 60 degrees Celsius, forming red rectangular diamagnetic I2 plus 4. Other polyiodine cations are not as well characterized, including bent dark brown or black I3 and centrosymmetric C2H green or black I5, known in the ASF 6 and aluminium chloride 4 salts, among others. The only important polyiodide anion in aqueous solution is linear triiodide, I3. Its formation explains why the solubility of iodine in water may be increased by the addition of potassium iodide solution. I2 plus I minus I minus 3 KEQ equals approximately 700 at 20 degrees Celsius. Many other polyiodides may be found when solutions containing iodine and iodide crystallize, such as I minus 5, I minus 9, I2 minus 4, and I2 minus 8, whose salts with large, weakly polarizing cations such as Cs plus may be isolated. Organoiodine compounds Organoiodine compounds have been fundamental in the development of organic synthesis, such as in the Hoffman elimination of amines, the Williamson ether synthesis, the Wurtz coupling reaction, and in Grignard reagents. The carbon iodine bond is a common functional group that forms part of core organic chemistry. Formally, these compounds may be thought of as organic derivatives of the iodide anion. The simplest organoiodine compounds, alkyl iodides, may be synthesized by the reaction of alcohols with phosphorus triiodide, these may then be used in nucleophilic substitution reactions, or for preparing Grignard reagents. The CI bond is the weakest of all the carbon halogen bonds due to the minuscule difference in electronegativity between carbon and iodine. As such, iodide is the best leaving group among the halogens, to such an extent that many organoiodine compounds turn yellow when stored over time due to decomposition into elemental iodine. As such, they are commonly used in organic synthesis, because of the easy formation and cleavage of the CI bond. They are also significantly denser than the other organohalogen compounds thanks to the high atomic weight of iodine. A few organic oxidizing agents like the iodanes contain iodine in a higher oxidation state than minus 1, such as 2-iodoxybenzoic acid, a common reagent for the oxidation of alcohols to aldehydes, and iodobenzene dichloride used for the selective chlorination of alkenes and alkynes. One of the more well-known uses of organoiodine compounds is the so-called iodoform test, where iodoform CHI3 is produced by the exhaustive iodination of a methyl ketone or another compound capable of being oxidized to a methyl ketone, as follows 
Some drawbacks of using organoiodine compounds as compared to organochlorine or organobromine compounds is the greater expense and toxicity of the iodine derivatives, since iodine is expensive and organoiodine compounds are stronger alkylating agents. For example, iodoacetamide and iodoacetic acid denature proteins by irreversibly alkylating cysteine residues and preventing the reformation of disulfide linkages. Halogen exchange to produce iodoalkanes by the Finkelstein reaction is slightly complicated by the fact that iodide is a better leaving group than chloride or bromide. The difference is nevertheless small enough that the reaction can be driven to completion by exploiting the differential solubility of halide salts, or by using a large excess of the halide salt. In the classic Finkelstein reaction, an alkyl chloride or an alkyl bromide is converted to an alkyl iodide by treatment with a solution of sodium iodide in acetone. Sodium iodide is soluble in acetone and sodium chloride and sodium bromide are not. The reaction is driven toward products by mass action due to the precipitation of the insoluble salt. Occurrence and production Iodine is the least abundant of the stable halogens, comprising only 0.46 parts per million of Earth's crustal rocks compare, fluorine 544 ppm, chlorine 126 ppm, bromine 2.5 ppm. Among the 84 elements which occur in significant quantities elements 1 to 42, 44 to 60, 62 to 83, and 90 to 92, it ranks 61st in abundance. Iodide minerals are rare, and most deposits that are concentrated enough for economical extraction are iodate minerals instead. Examples include lauterite, calcium iodate, and dietzite, 7 calcium iodate 8 calcium chromate. These are the minerals that occur as trace impurities in the caliche, found in Chile, whose main product is sodium nitrate. In total, they can contain at least 0.02% and at most 1% iodine by weight. Sodium iodate is extracted from the caliche and reduced to iodide by sodium bisulfite. This solution is then reacted with freshly extracted iodate, resulting in comproportionation to iodine, which may be filtered off. The caliche was the main source of iodine in the 19th century and continues to be important today, replacing kelp, which is no longer an economically viable source, but in the late 20th century brines emerged as a comparable source. The Japanese Minami Kanto gas field east of Tokyo and the American Anadarko Basin gas field in northwest Oklahoma are the two largest such sources. The brine is hotter than 60 degrees Celsius from the depth of the source. The brine is first purified and acidified using sulfuric acid, then the iodide present is oxidized to iodine with chlorine. An iodine solution is produced, but is dilute and must be concentrated. Air is blown into the solution to evaporate the iodine, which is passed into an absorbing tower where sulfur dioxide reduces the iodine. The hydrogen iodide is reacted with chlorine to precipitate the iodine. After filtering and purification the iodine is packed. 2 high plus Cl2 I2 plus 2 HCl I2 plus 2 H2O plus SO2 2 high plus H2SO4 2 high plus Cl2 I2 plus 2 HCl These sources ensure that Chile and Japan are the largest producers of iodine today. Alternatively, the brine may be treated with silver nitrate to precipitate out iodine as silver iodide, which is then decomposed by reaction with iron to form metallic silver and a solution of iron iodide. The iodine may then be liberated by displacement with chlorine. Applications Unlike chlorine and bromine, which have one significant main use dwarfing all others, iodine is used in many applications of varying importance. About half of all produced iodine goes into various organoiodine compounds, another 15% remains as the pure element, another 15% is used to form potassium iodide, and another 15% for other inorganic iodine compounds. The remaining 5% is for minor uses. Among the major uses of iodine compounds are catalysts, animal feed supplements, stabilizers, dyes, colorants and pigments, pharmaceutical, sanitation from tincture of iodine, and photography. Minor uses include smog inhibition, cloud seeding, and various uses in analytical chemistry. Analysis Potassium tetraiodomercurate 2, K2 mercury 4 iodide, is also known as Nessler's reagent. 
It is often used as a sensitive spot test for ammonia. Similarly, Cu2 mercury 4 iodide is used as a precipitating reagent to test for alkaloids. The iodide and iodate anions are often used for quantitative volumetric analysis, for example in iodometry and the iodine clock reaction, in which iodine also serves as a test for starch, forming a dark blue complex. An aqueous alkaline iodine solution is used in the iodoform test for methyl ketones. The iodine test for starch is still used to detect counterfeit banknotes printed on starch-containing paper. Medicine Elemental iodine Elemental iodine is used as a disinfectant either as the element, or as the water-soluble triiodide anion I3- generated in situ by adding iodide to poorly water-soluble elemental iodine the reverse chemical reaction makes some free elemental iodine available for antisepsis. Elemental iodine may also be used to treat iodine deficiency. In the alternative, iodine may be produced from iodophores, which contain iodine complexed with a solubilizing agent. Iodide ion may be thought of loosely as the iodophore in triiodide water solutions. Examples of such preparations include tincture of iodine, iodine in ethanol, or iodine and sodium iodide in a mixture of ethanol and water. Lugol S iodine, iodine and iodide in water alone, forming mostly triiodide. Unlike tincture of iodine, Lugol. S iodine has a minimized amount of the free iodine I2 component. Povidone iodine an iodophore, the antimicrobial action of iodine is quick and works at low concentrations, and thus it is used in operating theaters. Its specific mode of action is unknown. It penetrates into microorganisms and attacks particular amino acids such as cysteine and methionine, nucleotides, and fatty acids, ultimately resulting in cell death. It also has an antiviral action, but nonlipid viruses and parvoviruses are less sensitive than lipid-enveloped viruses. Iodine probably attacks surface proteins of enveloped viruses, and it may also destabilize membrane fatty acids by reacting with unsaturated carbon bonds. Other formulations In medicine, a saturated solution of potassium iodide is used to treat acute thyrotoxicosis. It is also used to block uptake of iodine-131 in the thyroid gland see isotopes section above. .When this isotope is used as part of radiopharmaceuticals such as that are not targeted to the thyroid or thyroid-type tissues, iodine-131 usually as iodide is a component of nuclear fallout, and is particularly dangerous owing to the thyroid gland's propensity to concentrate ingested iodine and retain it for periods longer than this isotope s radiological half-life of eight days. For this reason, people at risk of exposure to environmental radioactive iodine, iodine in fallout may be instructed to take non-radioactive potassium iodide tablets. The typical adult dose is 1 130 mg tablet per 24 hours, supplying 100 mg 100, micrograms of ionic iodine. The typical daily dose of iodine for normal health is of order 100 micrograms, c. Dietary intake. Below, ingestion of this large dose of non radioactive iodine minimizes the uptake of radioactive iodine by the thyroid gland. As an element with high electron density and atomic number, iodine absorbs X rays weaker than 33.3 keV due to the photoelectric effect of the innermost electrons. Organoiodine compounds are used with intravenous injection as X ray radiocontrast agents. This application is often in conjunction with advanced X-ray techniques such as angiography and CT scanning. At present, all water-soluble radiocontrast agents rely on iodine. Others The production of ethylene diamine dihydroiodide, provided as a nutritional supplement for livestock, consumes a large portion of available iodine. Another significant use is a catalyst for the production of acetic acid by the Monsanto and Cativa processes. In these technologies, which support the world's demand for acetic acid, hydroiodic acid converts the methanol feedstock into methyl iodide, which undergoes carbonylation. Hydrolysis of the resulting acetyl iodide regenerates hydroiodic acid and gives acetic acid. Inorganic iodides find specialized uses. 
Titanium, zirconium, hafnium, and thorium are purified by the Van Arkel process, which involves the reversible formation of the tetraiodides of these elements. Silver iodide is a major ingredient to traditional photographic film. Thousands of kilograms of silver iodide are used annually for cloud seeding to induce rain. The organoiodine compound erythrocene is an important food coloring agent. Perfluoroalkyl iodides are precursors to important surfactants, such as perfluorooctane sulfonic acid. Biological role Iodine is an essential element for life and, at atomic number Z. 53, is the heaviest element commonly needed by living organisms. Lanthanum and the other lanthanides, as well as tungsten with Z. 74, are used by a few microorganisms, it is required for the synthesis of the growth-regulating thyroid hormones thyroxine and triiodothyronine T4 and T3 respectively, named after their number of iodine atoms. A deficiency of iodine leads to decreased production of T3 and T4 and a concomitant enlargement of the thyroid tissue in an attempt to obtain more iodine, causing the disease known as simple goiter. The major form of thyroid hormone in the blood is thyroxine T4, which has a longer half-life than T3. In humans, the ratio of T4 to T3 released into the blood is between 14 to 1 and 20 to 1. T4 is converted to the active T3 3 to 4 times more potent than T4 within cells by deiodinases 5. Iodinase. These are further processed by decarboxylation and deiodination to produce iodothyronamine T1A and thyronamine T0A. All three isoforms of the deiodinases are selenium containing enzymes, thus, dietary selenium is essential for T3 production. Iodine accounts for 65% of the molecular weight of T4 and 59% of T3. 15 to 20 mg of iodine is concentrated in thyroid tissue and hormones, but 70% of all iodine in the body is found in other tissues, including mammary glands, eyes, gastric mucosa, fetal thymus, cerebrospinal fluid and choroid plexus, arterial walls, the cervix, and salivary glands. In the cells of those tissues, iodide enters directly by sodium iodide symporter the action of iodine in mammary tissue is related to fetal and neonatal development, but in the other tissues, it is at least partially unknown. Dietary intake Recommendations by the United States Institute of Medicine are between 110 and 130 micrograms for infants up to 12 months, 90 micrograms for children up to 8 years, 130 micrograms for children up to 13 years, 150 micrograms for adults, 220 micrograms for pregnant women and 290 micrograms for lactation. The tolerable upper intake level for adults is 1,100 micrograms per day. This upper limit was assessed by analyzing the effect of supplementation on thyroid stimulating hormone. The thyroid gland needs no more than 70 micrograms per day to synthesize the requisite daily amounts of T4 and T3. The higher recommended daily allowance levels of iodine seem necessary for optimal function of a number of body systems, including lactating breast, gastric mucosa, salivary glands, brain cells, choroid plexus, thymus, and arterial walls. Natural sources of dietary iodine include seafood, such as fish, seaweeds, such as kelp, and shellfish, dairy products, and eggs, so long as the animals received enough iodine, and plants grown on iodine rich soil. Iodized salt is fortified with iodine in the form of sodium iodide. As of 2000, the median intake of iodine from food in the United States was 240 to 300 micrograms per day for men and 190 to 210 micrograms per day for women. The general U.S. population has adequate iodine nutrition, with women of childbearing age and pregnant women having a possible mild risk of deficiency. In Japan, consumption was considered much higher, ranging between 5,280 micrograms per day to 13,800 micrograms per day from dietary seaweed or kombu kelp, often in the form of kombu umami extracts for soup stock and potato chips. However, new studies suggest that Japan's consumption is closer to 1,000 to 3,000 micrograms per day. 
The adult UL in Japan was last revised to 3,000 micrograms per day in 2015, after iodine fortification programs such as iodization of salt have been implemented. Some cases of iodine induced hyperthyroidism have been observed. So -called JOD -based phenomenon. The condition seems to occur mainly in people over 40, and the risk appears higher when iodine deficiency is severe and the initial rise in iodine intake is high. Deficiency in areas where there is little iodine in the diet, typically remote inland areas and semi-arid equatorial climates where no marine foods are eaten, iodine deficiency gives rise to hypothyroidism, symptoms of which are extreme fatigue, goiter, mental slowing, depression, weight gain, and low basal body temperatures. Iodine deficiency is the leading cause of preventable intellectual disability, a result that occurs primarily when babies or small children are rendered hypothyroidic by a lack of the element. The addition of iodine to table salt has largely eliminated this problem in the wealthier nations, but iodine deficiency remains a serious public health problem today in the developing world. Iodine deficiency is also a problem in certain areas of Europe. Information processing, fine motor skills, and visual problem solving are improved by iodine repletion in moderately iodine deficient children. Toxicity Elemental iodine is toxic if taken orally undiluted. The lethal dose for an adult human is 30 mg per kilogram, which is about 2.1 to 2.4 grams for a human weighing 70 to 80 kg even if experiments on rats demonstrated that these animals could survive after eating a 14,000 mg per kilogram dose. Excess iodine can be more cytotoxic in the presence of selenium deficiency. Iodine supplementation in selenium deficient populations is, in theory, problematic, partly for this reason. The toxicity derives from its oxidizing properties, through which it denaturates proteins, including enzymes. Elemental iodine is also a skin irritant, and direct contact with skin can cause damage, and solid iodine crystals should be handled with care. Solutions with high elemental iodine concentration, such as tincture of iodine and Lugol solution, are capable of causing tissue damage if used in prolonged cleaning or antisepsis. Similarly, liquid povidone iodine trapped against the skin resulted in chemical burns in some reported cases. Occupational exposure People can be exposed to iodine in the workplace by inhalation, ingestion, skin contact, and eye contact. The Occupational Safety and Health Administration OSHA has set the legal limit, permissible exposure limit for iodine exposure in the workplace at 0.1 ppm 1 mg per cubic meter during an 8-hour workday. The National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health has set a recommended exposure limit of 0.1 ppm 1 mg per cubic meter during an 8-hour workday. At levels of 2 ppm, iodine is immediately dangerous to life and health. Allergic reactions Some people develop a hypersensitivity to products and foods containing iodine. Applications of tincture of iodine or betadine can cause rashes, sometimes severe. Parenteral use of iodine-based contrast agents can cause reactions ranging from a mild rash to fatal anaphylaxis. Such reactions have led to the misconception widely held, even among physicians that some people are allergic to iodine itself, even allergies to iodine-rich seafood have been so construed. In fact, there has never been a confirmed report of a true iodine allergy, and an allergy to elemental iodine or simple iodide salts is theoretically impossible. Hypersensitivity reactions to products and foods containing iodine are apparently related to their other molecular components, thus, a person who has demonstrated an allergy to one food or product containing iodine may not have an allergic reaction to another. Patients with various food allergies shellfish, egg, milk, etc. or asthma are more likely to suffer reactions to contrast media containing iodine. As with all medications, the patient's allergy history should be questioned and consulted before any containing iodine are administered. References Bibliography Greenwood, Norman N., Earnshaw, Allen Chemistry of the Elements Butterworth-Heinemann. ISBN 0-08-037941-9.